Hello everyone and welcome to Advanced Pro University. Today we'll be discussing service items and how they behave within Advanced Pro. So within Advanced Pro, we have a lot of different types of products. If we click over to Advanced Pro and we'll go to our View Products page. So you'll see uh, we have a number of different types of products. We have standard products, we have kit products, we have assembled products. And you can see we have a little legend of those product types down here. Uh, so most of these are tracked in terms of inventory. Today we're going to be discussing one of the item types that is not tracked in inventory, the service item. So service items are used to cover any fee that's not directly linked to a finished good. Uh, so this can be installation fees, it can be freight fees, it can be any other fee. And these are used in a number of different ways in Advanced Pro. You can create a, a freight fee to allow a given vendor to act as a freight provider for tracking landed cost. You can purchase service items from vendors or attach service fees to a uh, sales order. Um, and you can attach service fees to a manufacturing good to account for costs or to make a note to the manufacturing team who might be using Advanced Pro or paperwork from it. Um, so there's a wide variety of ways to use these service items. Now to create a service item in Advanced Pro, just go, to, go ahead to add a new product. And under the product type option, uh, you are going to choose service. Uh, we'll go ahead and give this a name and a SKU just like any other product. So we're going to call this service um, shipping. And we'll give it a SKU. In this case, we're just going to call that a SKU shipping again. Now, just like any other service, uh, or just like any other item, we can now provide this and, and link it to a vendor. So if a vendor gives us shipping fees, like uh, Joe's Fast Freight might, uh, then we can go ahead and set that so that we're able to uh, place orders and, and, and link these. Now in the case of service items, there's a special behavior around our freight module that I'll get into in a bit as well. So uh, we can go ahead and add this item uh, anywhere in an order or on a bill of materials. If it is a customer order, let's go ahead to a customer order. We're going to go ahead and just set this just by typing in the SKU on the order. So if I go to where we might add a product, I can go ahead and put in our shipping service as something that can go on this order. In the case of shipping, you can also use our shipping line down here on the right. But for this particular item, we can go ahead and set our service fees for this line item. So that's one way we can go ahead and put this on an order. Now something to note, particularly with respect to customer orders, is that services are always filled. We don't care about their stock level. Your stock level will always be zero. There's no tracking of stock. So in this case, yeah, we will always fill. You cannot partially fill a service item. Uh, so if you do need to uh, short ship or, or make adjustments, you would make direct adjustments to the customer order if you need to add or remove fees. So to add a service item to a bill of materials, let's go to a manufactured item. Uh, we would go into either adding a, a new manufactured item or we would go to an existing assembly item and we could go ahead and add in some service fees here. So we'll go to edit and we will go to where we would adjust our bill of materials and we can add a certain amount of services uh, the exact same way we would add any other item. So I'm just going to use a service item we have here called service. So we can go ahead and add that in at this time. So it won't impact your inventory at all, but it will let uh, your accounting know that this, this cost for this service was incurred when you manufactured this item. And it can stand as a note or uh, 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 instruction to your production team to go ahead and use an item that you might not be tracking inventory on, like a pallet type or something along those lines. Okay, so this will appear on our work order now. If we go ahead and run uh, a work order for that item. Uh, we'll go to, uh, we'll just go to manufacturing or one or work order, and you'll see that service item appears. So we'll go ahead and open up that work order. Uh, we'll select our item, select where we're building it, and we'll just build one of these. 
So here we'll see our service item up here. Now you can also add service items on the fly for a specific work order. And that would be done down here under the additional uh, items area. We can go ahead and search for a given service item. Um, we'll grab our shipping service item, for example. We can go ahead and grab that item on the fly from our list of products to add to this work order. And so any costs that we incur on that item can be reflected in this specific work order. Okay, so uh, these are some good ways to account for things like water if you're manufacturing where a bill of materials or a recipe calls for a fixed amount of water. But since you get water from the tap, you don't necessarily need to track the water itself, but you may be paying a utility bill for the water and you may wish uh, to track that cost towards your finished good costs. Now, one last area I want to touch on is with respect to our freight module. Now, if we head over to our vendors area and we get to a bill, so that means we've placed an order, we've gone through actually receiving the goods, and uh, we come to the vendors uh, dashboard and we come to view all bills and credit memos. These are our receipts for orders that we've received in sort of our draft bills. Uh, we're in the pending bills tab. We can go over and actually open up one of these bills and we can use a service item to apply freight charges and we'll do that by pressing our freight button. If you don't have a freight button, do uh, feel free to reach out to our support team or your advanced pro advisor. They're going to help you get the module to enable that. Go ahead and open up that freight button and we can put in charges that we incurred, say $100 inland freight. We can choose our vendor, it has to be someone with a service item enabled and then we can choose from the service items that that vendor offers us. What this is going to do is in one step, it's going to make our uh, landed cost, uh, so it's going to contribute to our average landed cost for the products on this order, and it's also going to go ahead and make a freight bill, a payable that's going to go over to QuickBooks if we're syncing with QuickBooks. So that's all done in one step. We can do it for multiple vendors and multiple different uh, services that we offer through uh, through this or that we're, we're paying for through our freight. If you'd like more information on that, go ahead and check out our freight module video uh, on advancedprotect.com or on our YouTube channel. So this concludes our tour of service items today.